All right, so just a couple more questions related to graphing uh, tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant. Actually, here we've got a couple questions related to cotangent. So how does the graph of y equals 2 cotangent pi x, how does that differ from the graph of y equals cotangent x? And also, we can ask yourself, what are the zeros of y equals 2 cotangent pi x? So uh, maybe let's first address this question about how these graphs differ. Um, maybe to figure out the zeros, maybe uh, we, we don't have to graph it, but uh, maybe let's go ahead and actually graph 2 cotangent of pi x as well. So uh, recall that the period of cotangent, the period of regular just cotangent x, uh, cotangent x has a period of just pi. So the period of cotangent of pi x, uh, we do the same thing as before. Before we were, well, slightly different. We were taking 2 pi and dividing it by our b. But now, instead of taking 2 pi, since the original only has period of pi, we'll take pi and divide it by the absolute value of our b term, which again, in this case, is just pi. So really, we have pi divided by pi. So actually, we're going to get a period of just 1 for this cotangent of pi x function. Um, you know, what effect does the 2, um, so if we think about 2 cotangent of pi x, remember if you multiply out front, all that does is it vertically stretches. So this is going to vertically stretch. Our cotangent of pi x graph by a factor of 2. And that can be a little hard to see sometimes when you graph these. We'll try to make it a little clear. Um, so to me, those are the big differences. You know, again, if you multiply cotangent by 2, likewise, it's going to stretch it by a factor of 2. So basically, this new graph, to me, it's going to look like cotangent. The period is going to be uh, pushed in. It's going to be uh, uh, you know, less than what it was originally. And the 2 up front is going to take the graph and stretch it a little bit vertically. So. Maybe we can do that, and that'll help us figure out the zeros as well. Um, I'm going to start, start off, by, though, by actually graphing just cotangent of x real quick. So remember, cotangent is cosine x over sine x. Remember, dividing by 0 is undefined. So anywhere the denominator is 0, cotangent's going to be undefined. Well, sine of x is 0 at 0. Um, really at any multiple of pi. So here's x equals pi, x equals 2 pi. So again, this is a very rough graph here real quick. x equals negative pi, etc. Um, so cotangent, um, here's pi over 2. Uh, this would be 3 pi over 2. Cotangent is, it's kind of a shift and a flip of tangent. That's how I remember it. So it's kind of shifted over and flipped. And again, you can always plot points. Uh, so this would be negative pi over 2. You can always plot points if you forget this graph, just like any of them. Um, so there's cotangent of x. You know, when you multiply by 2, it's going to be kind of hard to see. This thing's just going to get bigger faster and kind of smaller faster. So maybe we can uh, try to make that happen a little bit. Let's think about graphing. Okay, so there's cotangent of x. There's our graph of that. Maybe we can think about cotangent of pi times x next. So again, we said that changes our period. We said our, our new period now becomes just 1. So instead of having to go, you know, if you think about starting at the origin and walking over pi units to hit your first asymptote, now we're just going to have to walk over one unit until we hit the first asymptote. So this is going to be an asymptote at x equals 1. There'll be an asymptote at x equals 2. There'll be an asymptote at x equals negative 1. There'll be an asymptote at x equals 0, etc. There's going to be asymptotes at every integer. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2. Maybe we'll stick x equals negative 2 in there as well. Okay, so that would be sort of the graph. That's how cotangent of pi x is going to change things. And then we would just squeeze it in between. Uh, let's go ahead and graph 2 cotangent of pi x. So all that's going to do, 
So instead of having pi over 2, we'll now be at 1 half. Instead of being at 3 pi over 2, it'll now go through 3 halves. Likewise, uh, it'll hit the x-axis at negative 1 half, negative 3 halves, etc. The 2 is just going to make it kind of get bigger faster, so I'm going to try to make it sort of get bigger faster. Again, kind of hard to see sort of these stretches. But this is going to be our basic, uh, kind of a rough sketch of 2 cotangent of pi x. So to address the original question, which was, I think, uh, the other question was, what are the zeros? What are the zeros of 2 cotangent pi x? And again, you could reason this out without graphing at all. But to me, the uh, zeros are going to be at, you know, positive negative 1 half, positive negative 3 halves, positive negative 5 halves, etc. And maybe uh, an easier way to write that is we can say the zeros occur we'll say at uh, 1 half times n where n is an integer. And again an integer is just plus minus 1. Uh, let's see, we have to be a little more careful than that actually because that's not going to quite give it to us. Um, almost worked right one half but if we plugged in two we have to be careful actually if we plug in two we would get one half times two which is not going to be correct so let's try this one more time I think the zeros are going to occur at one half plus well what are we doing we're really adding or subtracting one to get to the uh, sort of the next zeros so I think we should actually do one half plus uh, one times n where n is an integer I think this makes a little more sense so it just goes to show, you know, even sometimes I get confused by writing these generically. Plug some numbers in, though, and make sure that it works. And this one I do believe does work, because if we plug in n equals 1, if we plug in n equals 0, um, we'll get 1 half. If we let n equal 1, we would get 1 half plus 1, which would give us our positive 3 halves. If n is 2, we'll get a half plus 2, which will be 5 halves, etc. Likewise, n can be a negative number, so if we let n equal negative 1, we would get negative 1 half. If we let n equal 2, we would get a half minus 2, which would give us our negative 3 halves, etc. So I think this one's actually the way to go. So, um, again, nothing real crazy going on in this problem, just sort of, uh, you know, you got to know the definitions, you've got to know cotangent is cosine over sine, there's kind of no way around that. Um, you know, definitely helps to know your basic graph of cotangent. Um, and then it's just the same thing, you know, how do, how do coefficients out front, well, those vertically stretch the graph. Uh, what do coefficients on the x's do? Well, those change the period. Um, but again, uh, definitely just kind of thinking about graphing our new function in terms of all the transformations.